Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I figured for my 107th review, I would review Old Weller Antique 107. Now, I did not buy this bottle. This was gifted to me by a fan. Now, over the weekend, just a few days ago, I actually met up with this guy named Rob at a bar and we hung out, we had a couple drinks, we talked whiskey, it was actually really awesome. And while we were there, you know, he, he had told me, this, part of the reason we met up was that he told me he wanted to give me a bottle and just, I was like, hey, you know what? I've actually got nothing to do today. Let's meet up, let's hang out, let's have a drink. While we were drinking, um, one would assume, you know, he was giving me a free bottle. I expected to pick up the tab. And I told him that. And then he told me his intent was to pick up the tab. I insisted. He insisted. We were two gentlemen at an impasse. <laughs> so Rob and I had a little discussion, figured we'd make it more fun. I uh, brought him one of these coins because it just seemed appropriate. And uh, we decided that we would let the bartender flip the coin. So if it landed on the whiskey dick, then I paid. If it landed on bookers, then he paid just so happy to land on Buckers. <laughs> so not only did I get a free bottle, I got some, some free drinks as well and good company. So thank you very much, Rob, I appreciate it. Let's get back to the whiskey. W.L. Weller is sh uh, short for William LaRue Weller. And he is a man who is often accredited with creating weeded bourbons. Basically, that means that the second most dominant for us grain in the whiskey is wheat. And in this case, the mash bills usually figured to be about 70% corn, 16% wheat, and 14% barley, but I can't confirm that. Um, this is made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery, which if you've never heard of them, you can check out some of the reviews up there. I've done a decent amount of stuff on them by now, but I think most people would agree that Almost everything out of Buffalo Trace is good, if not great. In fact, they make some of the best bourbons that you can buy. So, um, W.L. Weller, he had this little mantra. He, he used to say, honest whiskey for an honest price. Now, this is one of those things that you hear out of old marketing slogans. Um, a lot of the, the older guys in whiskey had something like this. Um, but it doesn't matter. If you truly believe that, then it's all the better. And he seemed to be a patron of um, bourbon. He seemed to love bourbon, he would teach people about bourbon, and he would even kind of hold that mantra true to the point where he would actually, uh, with the barrels that would be produced, he would actually dip his own thumb in green paint and then put it on the barrel. And that would be his mark to whoever it was selling it to that that was in fact a like a good barrel of, of whiskey. Because back in the early 1800s, it was kind of the Wild West. You could do whatever you wanted to, to whiskey. So this was a mark that this was something good. Um, anyway. And there's also another accredi uh, accreditation um, to uh, W.L. Weller that is interesting to know. So um, Julian Van Winkle, who most of you will know as Pappy, was hired originally by William Weller. And, you know, he, I can't say how much they might have learned from each other or, you know, Pappy learned from uh, W.L. Weller, but they did definitely work at the same place and he was definitely hired by W.L. Weller. So, interesting thing. And I, I will talk a little bit more about that in the overview. But, let's talk about the nosing and the tasting of this whiskey because I've talked far too long. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and nose this. So, the first thing I get, and maybe this is just because I happen to have some in my fridge and I've smelled it recently, but I smell green apples to the point of almost like apple juice. Um, it's just very sweet with that apple nose. It's almost like definitely that. Um, there's also a backing of honey and then there's a lighter nose to this than you would typically get in a normal bourbon, which would contain rye and typically have some spice to it. This has a very light nose to it, and you're gonna see that in almost any weeded bourbon. It always has this like crispness to it, and I always find it very interesting. I like weeded bourbons a lot, personally. Um, and then you've got typical bourbon notes. You got like vanilla and a little bit of oak in there. I wouldn't say that the uh, there's much caramel, um, so I, I would kind of just stick with the vanilla and the oak. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. And this one's to you, Rob. Now this is where it gets interesting. Because if you were to hand me two glasses and have me nose it and taste it, and you poured this into each one, I would never believe that it was the same thing. 
the taste is dramatically different than the nose. And in this case, I would also not believe that there was no rye in here. Oddly enough, it's got a lot of spice to it. Um, now, there's no rye, so the spice is coming from the barrel, but it's also coming from kind of the cinnamon note that you're picking up as well. Uh, but I just, I would never believe that a whiskey could taste this way without having rye in it. It's very strange. Um, anyway, there's there's this also this oiliness, which comes with the high ABV, obviously, but unlike something like Booker's, um, you're getting this oiliness that you, I can only really compare to almost like a peated scotch. Obviously there's, there's not nearly as much smoke, if any, in here, but you do tend to get this viscous, oily residue in your mouth when you drink a peated scotch. You're getting the same thing here. It's just totally coating the inside of your mouth. Very interesting. All, all together, very surprising whiskey. Uh, there's also some almond flavor in here for me, uh, and then a little bit of wood as well. So let me have one more sip. Mostly because I deserve it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk overall. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the correlation between Weller and Pappy, and speaking specifically of the, the bourbons. So Weller tends to be it's it's all the same mash bill, both between both different types of whiskeys. But Pappy Van Winkle is designed to be kind of the best of the best that Buffalo Trace produces from this mash bill. Anything that doesn't make that cut ends up as Weller. And that is why you have so much trouble finding a bottle of this stuff. Somewhere along the line, people found out that that was the case, that if it was not Pappy, it ended up being Weller. So now you've got these $25, 30 $35 bottles going for almost like eight or seven or eight times the price, like hundreds of dollars. And it's stupid, right? <laughs> you know, I've already went on my rant about, about the, the secondary market and how much I, I dislike that. Um, but let me put this out here. First off, if, if this were all things, you know, normal, I would say this is by far a buy it. This is a fantastic bourbon. You're gonna love the heck out of this thing. And that surprise between the nose and the taste is something I want you to try to experience if you can. But because of the scarcity of this and the trouble there is in buying it, I find it very hard to really recommend that you go out of your way to get it. Um, but if you ever see it, don't hesitate to pick it up, especially if you get it at normal MSRP of between, you know, somewhere around 30 bucks. But here's where it gets interesting. As you guys have, may have seen in some of my other videos, I like hunting for whiskeys. Um, you know, I don't do it all the time because, you know, life takes a lot of time, but when I have some time, it's fun to drive around and try to find something that you, you don't normally see. And that's where this could be fun. Hunting around for wellers could be a fun thing for you to do if you just happen to have an afternoon with nothing to do. You wanna go explore some liquor stores you never see. Um, I would suggest you go to some that are kind of off the beaten path, ones that might not have a whole lot of turnover in product. You might be able to find some really cool stuff there, including some weller. So. That does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks again, Rob, for the bottle, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.